The Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Philadelphia Eagles. The Bucs are seven-point favorites. Another excellent performance yesterday from Tom Brady, who's having just an incredible start uh, to the season. I mean, even though they, they had a little bit of struggles against New England, they only scored on the red zone, I think, once in their four trips there against New England. And then yesterday against Miami, they just came out, guns a-blazing. Uh, Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, Giovanni Bernard, Leonard Fournette, just so many weapons that Tampa Bay has. And, and Tom Brady's very lucky. I mean, he's, he's playing great, but he's very lucky to have all these amazing weapons at his disposal. Um, and even though Miami has struggled here, it was nice to see just another excellent performance from Tampa Bay. Uh, Philadelphia got the win <clears throat> uh, yesterday against Carolina. Uh, it, it took a long time. Carolina let them in that game longer than they should have. Um, <clears throat> two interceptions in the fourth quarter of Sam Darnold. And Jalen Hurts with the rushing touchdown at the end of the game to keep them in there. Uh, but it's it's just not working right now for Philadelphia. Even though, yeah, they did win. Um, <clears throat> they still have... I, I still don't trust their defense all that well. They... They're, they're not running the ball, I feel like, very well. Um, I mean, they're barely running it at all. They What, 13 carries yesterday? Philadelphia's just had a lot of issues here, and Tampa Bay's offense is just explosive. They've got it going well right now. Um, and the the team is just, again, their, their pass defense, they have a lot of injuries there. They lost David yesterday. Uh, hopefully he'll be back soon. But the Tampa Bay offense is just really working well. I think they will uh, get to Philadelphia's defense. I think they'll cause some struggles there. I just think that they're going to... I think it's going to be a very... <clears throat> Uh, explosive game for Tampa Bay. It's just like most of their games have been this year. I think their offense is going to really come together here in this game, and I think they will win. Give me the Buccaneers, minus seven. The Miami Dolphins and the Jacksonville Jaguars in London. The Dolphins are three-and-a-half-point favorites. I mean, uh, gosh, can we at one time ever send London good teams? You realize we've been going to London for, I think, almost 15 years. We've never had one game where two teams have winning records. Not once, not even by accident, not even on, uh, not even by accident do we have a game in which we've had two good teams. It's always either one bad team or two bad teams, and it continues here with Dolphins Jaguars. I'll take Miami, but I mean, gosh, Jacksonville. I'm surprised Urban Meyer hasn't been fired already. It's just a, a complete nightmare there. And Miami, I mean, their offense looked a little bit better t- yesterday, but their defense has just been torn up. I'll go with Miami, but gosh, I, I feel so bad for the people in London. You don't deserve this. I, I apologize. We should send you... I liked it a couple years ago when we sent you Yankees Red Sox. That was fun. I'm sorry that you have to keep getting bad football. I mean, and you wonder why we're, we don't, they may not be excited about football because we're not giving them good stuff here. I'll take the Dolphins, but whatever. Just skip this game on, uh, at 9.30 in the morning. Don't even bother watching that. Give me the Dolphins minus three and a half. The Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. The Packers are four and a half point favorites. It was certainly not easy yesterday for Green Bay to get that win. I mean, Mason Crosby, how many times? He had four chances at a game-winning field goal. He missed three, eventually finally got it. Good from 49 yards. That was a struggle, though, for Green Bay there. I mean, they, they, they really were not able to put away Cincinnati there. And, I mean, they give up a lot of big plays. We saw it yesterday, the 70-yard touchdown from Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase. That's a problem there. Um, Chicago coming off a win over the Raiders. Um, still not... Totally, you know, and Chicago's got a tough schedule coming up. They got Green Bay, they've got Tampa. Um, they did beat a nice team on the road, even without David Montgomery, which was nice. They had Damian Williams and Khalil Herbert, um, both fresh well. They rushed for over 125 yards and one, one touchdown. Um, I still have concerns about their offense right now. Uh, it was a little bit better in, in the last two games for Chicago, but uh, still don't still have a total confidence. And of course, Justin Fields just starting out here. So I uh, have my concerns there. I'm going to roll with Green Bay. Um, I just Green Bay. I feel like Rodgers has been known to beat up on the Bears uh, for years here. Like that will continue here, even though there's. I mean, I mean, how resilient that win was yesterday for Green Bay. They were without three of their five starters on the offensive line, and they were without two of their best defensive players, and they still won the game. Um, you have Rodgers right now, who's playing really well. Three hundred forty-four yards, two touchdowns. You have eleven receptions yesterday from Devontae Adams. You have Aaron Jones. You have those three guys working well. We'll see if they can get any of their guys back. But I just think Green Bay's offense has really got a nice rhythm going right now, and uh, Chicago. Justin Fields is trying. I still think it'll take him a little while to, to get into the groove here. Even on the road, I'm going to take Green Bay. Give me the Packers. Minus four and a half. The Cincinnati Bengals take on the Detroit Lions. The Bengals are three and a half point favorites. Uh, yesterday's loss for Cincinnati was just excruciating. I mean, they had so many chances. We thought they won the game. We thought Evan McPherson hit the game on kicker, or at least he did. Um, but just uh, just so close, they're not even uh, just not able to come up with it there. Uh, the Lions, and also speaking of tough losses, you just knew yesterday when the Lions kicked that hit that two point conversion, 
You just knew, maybe in my heart, the Lions were not going to win this game because something always happens with the Lions. They never win. They always have the most heartbreaking, gut-wrenching losses. I feel so bad for Jared Goff. He's in purgatory right now. Um, well, it could be hell, actually. It's either hell or purgatory. I'm not sure. But it, it, it's not great for, 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 for the Lions right now. It's just the, the turnovers. I mean, just you know, Jared Goff had, what, six, uh, six fumbles right now. Um, he threw an interception in the third quarter. Since 2016, Goff has 81 turnovers, the third most of any player over that span. And, yeah, it's, it's just, they just cannot win anything, and they lost Quinty Cepheus yesterday. I'm taking the Bengals here in this game. Um, I, I, Burrow and Chase, that is going to be an unbelievable combination. I think that's clear now. Those two are looking so good. I mean, what was it yesterday? Six catches yesterday for Chase for 159 yards and a touchdown. Um, and the Bengals have needed it. They're not, they're not the best team. They still play way too inconsistent. Uh, they have their bad moments. But... I'm I'm liking Cincinnati here in this game mainly because I mean am I really trusting uh, am I really going to trust Detroit? Um, so give me the Bengals here on the road. Burrow Chase, I think those two on the offense will really get it going. Give me the Bengals minus three and a half. The Los Angeles Rams take on the New York Giants. The Rams are ten and a half point favorites. Um, you know it, it did help that on Thursday that they knocked Geno Smith out of the game with his or I'm sorry they knocked Russell Wilson out of the game with his finger injury, but the Rams were able to overcome it. You know, Able to, whatever, however they got the win, they got it. Um, it was not a pretty win for the Rams. I mean, they were, a lot of points in that game, like, you know, they're not putting the Seattle away. Stafford struggled early, but four second half scoring drives led the Rams to the win. They're 4-1 and one now, uh, rebounded after a tough loss to the Cardinals. Um, they continue to start slow on offense. They, they, it takes them a while for this team to get going. But once they get going, it's really good. Um, and now they take on a Giants team that who knows what the heck it's going to be like because... Everybody's injured on this team now, it looks like. Um, I mean, you look at Jones has a concussion. We'll see if he's there. Saquon's got an ankle injury. Galladay has a knee injury. Andrew Thomas, you know, has a foot injury. I mean, if, if, if Mike Glennon's playing in this game, it's not, good for, it's not good for the Giants at all. So we don't know about the health of these guys. I just knew that on yesterday, the Giants were not going to be able to pull that off, considering that I feel like it's happened many times where the Giants come off a big win and people think they might be able to pull off the back-to-back, -back, and then they just completely fall apart. And that happened here again uh, yesterday. The Giants are just in a lot of trouble. They're three games out of the NFC East. A lot of injuries. It, it looks bad here. This is the perfect opportunity for the Rams to pounce. I think, unlike the other games that they've had, I think they will start off strong in the first quarter because it's very similar. I mean, think about 2017, the last time the Rams played the I mean, maybe the Rams played the Giants before that, but 2017, I remember, the Rams just destroyed the Giants. They went into New York. They crushed them. Um, and they just got completely embarrassed there. I could see something like that happening here, especially if... Going and starting, and if you don't have Saquon, you don't have Galladay, especially, and you have more problems on the offensive line. I'm like loving the Rams here in this game. Ten and a half points. I think the Rams win this one easily. Give me the Rams minus ten and a half. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Washington to be determined. The Chiefs are six and a half point favorites. What the heck is wrong with Kansas City? Well, obviously it's their defense. It's so so bad. They only have two former first round picks on the defense, so maybe maybe that's the problem there. Um, it, it, they they were completely inept. They're letting these teams just march all the way down the field. And we know Buffalo's good. We know Buffalo is a very good team. But it, it, just seeing just how anemic they look, just how just unbelievably distressingly bad. Um, I don't even know if that's a word. I don't care. And as great as the offense is, they're not going to be able to overcome it if the defense continues to be this terrible. If the defense continues to be this just dreadful, then I'm not sure the offense is going to be able to pull it out and win all these, you know, and be able to make it to the Super Bowl. Um... I mean, we're seeing like Kansas City reporters talk about how it might be tough for this team to make the playoffs, which is weird to think. I still think they'll make the playoffs. Their offense is too good for that. But being two and three right now in the AFC West is, you know, they're, what they're two games out right now. AFC West hasn't been that bad. Um, so it's just such a problem right now here for the Chiefs with this defense. No offense can only do so much. Uh, and speaking of bad defenses, Washington, and that's more surprising. We knew kind of the Kansas City defense was bad. Washington was supposed to have an elite defense, and they continue to make boneheaded mistakes. Um, you know, the, the coverage is bad. There's just every week there's some terrible, terrible play, missing tackles, blowing coverage. It's a real problem there. And Taylor Heineke has been fine. He, he has he has his moments, but he, he's he still has he doesn't have great arm strength, and that's a problem here with uh with him. And, and I, I just don't know if he's the quarterback for the future of this team. Um I mean I just off the, but Brian Fitzpatrick isn't the starter for this team either, so they've got a lot of problems here though, um, going forward. I'm taking Washington for the reason that if you follow me on the show, you know that I talk about the Chiefs don't cover spreads. They did it again yesterday. They did not cover spreads. I think they've only covered two in their last like 12 or 13 games, maybe even more. 
I'm going to roll at Washington, even though this makes no sense, because Washington is dreadful right now. They make so many mistakes, penalties, defense. There's injuries with Logan Thomas and Curtis Samuel. But we talk, Kansas City doesn't do it. They do not cover spreads at all. So six and a half points, I'm liking my chances here with Washington. Um, even though it makes no sense, and Kansas City should win this game by 20. But you know what? Washington could be able to, with that defense, Washington might score 20. Who knows? I mean, they might score 30 against that pathetic. That, this could be the high-scoring game of the week. <laughs> Uh, two defenses that are just trash, an amazing offense in Kansas City, and an offense that we've seen have potential in Washington. So this could be the highest scoring game of the week. Uh, whatever happens there, I'm going with Washington to cover the spread. I said Kansas City wins, but Washington covered the spread. And if, if Washington wins this game, panic in Kansas City. Give me Washington plus six and a half. The Minnesota Vikings and the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers are one-point favorites. Uh, that was a... Hard-fought win there for Minnesota. They let it go all the way to the end. They had that nice 30 seconds to be able to come back and kick the game-winning field goal there. Um, I mean, and the Vikings did a nice job holding the Lions. They were 3-11 and on third down. Uh, even it is the Lions, though. Their offense is um, was not great yesterday. Had a lot of problems. Just a lot of bad play calling. Um, you know, back at the end of the second quarter yesterday, you had 41 seconds left, and you called back-to-back runs. Why not let Justin Jefferson um, you know, throw it down there? Um this is not a great team. And neither one of these teams, I feel like, is great. Carolina suffered some problems yesterday against Philadelphia. Uh, just it, it, it looked like vintage Sam Darnold and not in a good way. Uh, now, there were a lot of drop passes, uh, but he had three picks. The, the Panthers, though, were, were bad around. He is thankfully going to have probably Christian McCaffrey next week, so that should help Carolina there. But the offensive line is anemic. Uh, a lot of lot of issues there. And you have injuries with Cam Irving and uh, you know moving Taylor Morton to the left side. I mean, they, they, they. I mean, in the second half, I think last week against Dallas, he had like 50% uh, covered. He had 50% of pressure on uh, Darnold and his dropbacks, and yeah, his, his completion percentage right now is 56. Um, it, it's just it's it, it's a problem there for, uh, for for Sam. And I'm gonna roll with Minnesota here, even though look, this is not a game I would bet under any circumstance. I would not bet the, any one of these two teams right now. Carolina's struggling there with the offense. Uh, Minnesota too. <sighs> just think, Minnesota's just a little bit better. Um, and I, I think Minnesota is just going to have be able to do more on the on the offensive side of the ball here, uh, it, which is weird to say because I have enjoyed Sam and I, I want to see Sam uh, get better, but it, it's just not. And the defense the defense is still struggling. Stephen Gilmore is going to play in Week Seven, so that should help Carolina's defense there a little bit. But this is his last game without him. I think Minnesota covers here. I think they get a big game from Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins. I don't know why I'm trusting him here, but I'm going to say he does. I would take Minnesota to cover here just barely. I like the Vikings in this game. Give me the Vikings, plus one. The Arizona Cardinals take on the Cleveland Browns. The Browns are two and a half point favorites. <sighs> Man, um, Arizona never thought they'd be the last undefeated team. Who had that at the beginning of the year? Uh, and and it, look, that was not. There, there was a lot of chances they could have lost that game yesterday, but they were not able. They, were, they 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 hung in there against San Francisco. They're a tough, fun team. Kyler Murray has just been awesome to watch. Um, there are a lot of injuries, though, with this team. I mean, you lose Rodney Hudson. You lose Max Williams. Uh, you already have two of your cornerbacks and Brian Murphy and Marco Wilson gone. Um, but thankfully, you have Kyle Murray just being awesome right now. And he's been fun to watch. The Browns, just another really difficult loss um, to the Chargers. The second loss this year were, and much similar to the Kansas City game, in which the Browns were tra- trading haymakers all game long. And then by the end, they were just not able to, to hang in there. Um, but they had chances to do it. They could not pull it off. Uh, and Baker had a great performance, I will say. 23 for 32, 305 yards, two touchdown passes. Herbert was just a little bit better yesterday. And Justin Herbert, we're going to hopefully talk about him later. But he's really... I, I, I was already liking him the first few times I saw him. But now I'm really like full Kool-Aid drinker in Justin Herbert. Uh, I think he's going to be a real star here in this league, if he's not already is. Um, Arizona, though, in this game, I'm going to roll with Arizona. Uh, I just think right now... And yeah, the injuries could be a problem. They just, they're just working a little bit better right now. Kyle Murray... It's, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be, I mean, Cle- Cleveland, dog pound. It's going to be a fun, exciting game there between two really good teams, two explosive offenses. I just think right now Kyle Murray is just able to do a little more. I think he's a little bit more consistent right now than Baker Mayfield is. Baker has the capacity to sometimes just have a weird what the heck's happening game. I think that happens here. And I think Arizona's offense just does more here in this game. I think they really put, uh, put pressure on Cleveland's defense. I say Arizona wins this one. It's two and a half points. It's weird. Arizona's the only undefeated team, and they're underdogs here in this game. I guess they are on the road, so they're taking that into consideration. But I'm liking Arizona in this game. Two and a half points. And we saw about Cleveland's defense, the struggles they had yesterday. I think that continues here in this game. Give me the Cardinals plus two and a half. 
The Las Vegas Raiders and the Denver Broncos. The Broncos are three-point favorites. Rough week for the Raiders with the John Gruden controversy. Has he lost the locker room is a major concern here. Um, how do the African-American players feel about him right now? That's it's something that, that could be a concern here. Um, Gruden better hope that whatever it is that he's able to figure that out. And the bottom line also, they're not, they didn't win yesterday. Uh, tough loss. The offense looked pretty anemic. Um, you know, the, the, the offensive line was, had some troubles there. The defense, not able to, to do enough there. I mean, just a lot of drops yesterday between Brian Edwards and Daryl Walker. Uh, some stupid penalties. The offensive line, again, continues to show its issues there. It's uh, it's it's bad. I mean, in the last seven quarters, the Raiders only have 410 passing yards. That's not that's not good. Um, entering the fourth quarter yesterday, and then they were able to figure it out a little bit there. I mean, they were three and out to start the season, and they have not looked right here in the last two weeks. So we'll see if uh, the Raiders can get it back together here. I'm not convinced right now. I haven't been convinced though with all of John Gruden's uh, tenure there with the Raiders. It's been very very bumpy to say the least. I'm gonna roll with Denver here in this game, even though that was a tough loss yesterday. Um, they're gonna be at home. I mean, yesterday, but they were 1-for-10 on third down midway through the fourth quarter. Uh, the offensive line, you know, did not protect the quarterback well. Um, they they got to get to the run game more, I feel like. I feel like they, need, they really needed that. The secondary is issues. I mean, they let Ben really uh, do a good job, on uh, do a good number on them uh, in this game. Somebody has to win, though, this game. And the Raiders are teetering here. Um, the Raiders are really, this could be a little bit of a collapse here for the Raiders. Um, let's hope Jerry Judy comes back. Um... And we've seen what Denver can do here. We've seen what Bridgewater can do. I think in this game, at home, I think Bridgewater's going to have the momentum here. Um, I just think that right now, Denver's in a much better place. I think the offense scores more here in this game than the Raiders do, which is usually how you win football games. You usually win if you score more points than the other team. So I'm taking the Broncos here. Uh, hopefully, again, Judy comes back. We'll see how that, that whole situation is. I haven't heard the latest about him. Uh, but I think Denver's offense, I think Bridgewater finds a... Finds it here. They get to the Raiders' defense. The Raiders continue to have struggles uh, defending Carr. I think Denver. I think their Denver's defense gets to it, and uh, I think Denver wins this game. Give me the Broncos minus three. The Dallas Cowboys take on the New England Patriots. The Cowboys are four-point favorites. I was trying to think. This might be the two most popular teams, and not most popular, the most talked about teams in the NFL: Cowboys and Patriots. Or at least the Patriots were until uh, Brady left. But, I mean, for years, that was, those were the two teams. Was Cowboys, Patriots. Cowboys, Patriots. Um, Cowboys are looking fantastic right now. I know there were a lot of injuries with the Giants, but, I mean, how many great performances in a row here? Dak has just been on a surge here as of late. Before he got hurt last year, he was on fire. And now he's continued to show that here now that he's been back. Zeke, 95 yards rushing for a third straight game. I mean, Trayvon Diggs has just been insane. Um... There's a little problem with the, the offensive line, just slightly, but it's not too big right now. And uh, their defense continues to make huge plays. Four straight wins for Dallas. Um, I mean, and by the way, uh, only twice um, since 1989, they have had 15 seasons which they have had win streaks of four or more games. Only twice they did not make the playoffs, 1990 and 2011. So that's good signs here for Dallas that they've won four straight. Maybe this is looking like um, this could be a really uh, NFC contender here, and I think they will be. I think they've already proven that. I don't know if they're the best team in the NFC, but they've definitely proven that they have the talent to compete. Um, but it is Cowboys, so you never know. Uh, New England, that was another tough one. That should not have been as easy as it should have been. Houston's one of the worst teams in the NFL. And they're doing so many dumb things right now. They're losing fumbles at the goal line. They're busted coverages, bad penalties. They look completely inept right now, uh, New England does. And so I'm, j I'm just looking at it right now. Maybe completely inept is the wrong word, but they're not... They're not as smart as they usually should be. A Bill Pelichek team should be much better than the one that we're seeing right now. It was good seeing Mac Jones yesterday have to fight back to get a win. So that was that was good there. And you know, if you're a Patriots fan, you can look at that as a positive that you know, maybe uh, they got a you know they got a bright future ahead of this uh, with this kid. But Dallas right now is just so much better. They've got the offensive. But th this is going to be a tough game for for Jones. I feel like we're going to see how does Mac Jones handle the pressure of this game against a great Dallas team, much like uh, Tampa was the last few weeks. And I mean, Tampa was a great team a couple weeks ago. And he really showed how good it can be in that situation. We'll see how tough the, this situation can be against an excellent Dallas team. But I think Dallas in this game, I think they, they pull it off. They do enough. Uh, Dak and company. Dak makes it work. Um, Zeke, everybody, I think Cowboys are in a... Uh, I, think, I think they dominate this game. Interesting to see. Again, I'm curious to see how New England's going to respond here. But I think Dallas wins this one going away. Give me the Cowboys minus four. 
The Seattle Seahawks take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers are four-and-a-half-point favorites. This is a Sunday night game that you could probably skip. I mean, I'm sure NBC was much more excited. Like, ooh, Seahawks, Steelers, Wilson, Big Ben. They were much more excited about this game at the beginning of the year, as they are now. I mean, it looks like they're going to lose Russell Wilson for at least a month, maybe up to eight weeks. That is devastating for Seattle. Um, you know, sorry, Geno Smith, I don't think he's good enough to be able to keep Seattle above water. Uh, the defense is already bad. And now again, now you lose the one thing on this team that was able to keep it afloat, Wilson. And you're going to lose him for a long period of time. It's the first time he's been injured in his career, which is um, pretty amazing there. It, it, it just, it's not looking great here for Pittsburgh or for Seattle. Another game I would not bet because Pittsburgh has also been very inconsistent. Um, even though yesterday against Denver, they really showed what they should be doing. I mean, great game by Najee Harris, 100 rushing yards by early in the eve. What do you have, uh, 122 yards on, three, on 23 carries? Um, that's what it should be, because Ben can't really do it right now in terms of passing. And he, yesterday he played fine because they had him. They didn't have him throw that much. 25 passes, fewest he's had all season. Uh, he did have two touchdowns that uh, traveled at least f- uh, 15 air yards. So it, th- that's the best way to use Ben here. Don't use him too much. Try to pick a spot. 15 for 25, 253 yards, two touchdowns. Um, get the running game going. And we saw it get going here uh, yesterday, and I say it continues to go here at home next week. Four and a half points. I'm liking the Steelers here in this game. I, I, I just, I'm trying to see a situation with Seattle come. Maybe, maybe, maybe if Ben is just completely awful, um, Gino can pull off an upset here. But it, it does not look good for Seattle in this game. Give me the Steelers minus four and a half. The Buffalo Bills take on the Tennessee Titans. The Bills are four and a half point favorites. The Buffalo Bills right now are the favorites to win the Super Bowl according to Vegas, and they should be. Yesterday was. A fantastic, all-around, complete, incredible performance. They did it on in every aspect. Allen looked amazing. What do you have? Over 200 yards, a couple touchdowns there. Two touchdowns on throws of 15 yards or more. They intercepted Mahomes twice, including a pick six. They recovered a fumble on a kickoff in the first half. There are some concerns I have. Ten penalties. And the running game is a little bit too inconsistent. They, they're going to need to fix that. But overall, Buffalo is just amazing right now. Um, all-around, they are an incredible team. And... They're the ninth team to have a plus 100 score differential through five games in the past 50 seasons. Half of the previous eight won the Super Bowl that year. The Bills have scored 35 points in four straight games. Second time in team history that has happened. The other time, 2004. Um, they've just got it rolling right now, and I think they should be the favorites. They, they've, they've earned it. They are a really good team. They've fixed the problems that I thought it had at the beginning of the year. They've really come together here and really showed it. In the rain in Kansas City, they looked amazing. Good win for Tennessee. Jacksonville is a mess, but they need that victory. Um, they didn't put, it took them a long time to put the game away, but then eventually they, they got it going. Um, I mean, they, they, again, too many, too many big, uh, 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 mistakes that they had here. The run defense is a little strong, uh, is struggling there, but Derrick Henry, man, uh, 29 carries, 130 yards, three touchdowns, looking good here. But even though I like Tennessee, they've got a big problem here. They're, they're coming in against a red hot Buffalo team. This could be a real statement for Tennessee if they were able to pull this off, uh, against a just smoking hot Buffalo team coming off the, one of the biggest wins of the year. But I think in this game, I think the Buffalo wins it. Four and a half point favorites. I like the Bills here in this game. I think offense, defense, I think they will, they will carry this game here. I'm loving the Bills here in this spot. Tennessee will try. They'll, they'll, they'll give a good effort. But I think Buffalo pulls away with the win. Give me the Bills minus four and a half. That's it for now, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, anyway, if you're to see, make sure you subscribe down below. I'll be back tomorrow to break down the other two uh, games here for week six. And throughout the week, I'll also have uh, you know other videos on baseball, and football, and we will have basketball videos here coming soon, and of course every touchdown on Sunday. So, see you guys then. Take care, and God bless.